The story of viruses in BC salmon continues to unravel. Sometimes it feels like a murder mystery. Who done it? The more fish we sample, the more European viruses we find. It's astounding that no one has actually really looked before. That it's Alex who is uncovering this. One of particular concern is the Piscine Rio virus, a salmon virus that seems to be quite new to the coast of BC, but is now being found everywhere, especially in farmed salmon. Over 70% of the samples from farmed salmon grown in BC are coming back positive for the Piscine Rio virus. Many BC wild salmon are also testing positive for the virus, but the numbers are much lower. What is concerning is that samples of fish prior to 2008 show no signs of this virus. Now it seems to be everywhere. The only information that we have to go on about this virus are several scientific papers from Europe. The scientists there studying the virus say it spreads like wildfire and that it is reported to be the causative agent of a serious disease called heart and skeletal muscle inflammation which causes lesions in the heart and muscle tissue and can make the flesh and heart soft, impeding the fish's ability to swim and uptake oxygen. It appears this virus is of European origin and was likely imported into BC by the salmon farming industry. Since 1989, 30 million Atlantic salmon eggs from Europe have been imported into BC. Alex began finding this European virus in her samples in 2012. If Piscine Rio virus is a problem for Pacific wild salmon, we have a huge problem in our hands because I'm finding it in virtually all of the farm salmon in the supermarkets. These farm salmon were raised in net pens on the major migration routes of British Columbia's wild salmon. So <laughs> you run all of your Fraser sockeye through farm after farm after farm effluent. By the time they get out to sea, they're carrying the virus. What we don't know is, is, is it killing them, but do we really want to gamble on that? and just let this all happen without even looking into it? I don't think so. The answer that I got from government and from the industry was really, don't worry, run along, nothing to see here, folks. But from my own work and reading the scientific literature, that answer was not correct. If you look at Marine Harvest's website, which is the world's largest fish farming company, in their annual report from 2012, they list the disease HSMI as the second leading cause of loss for the company worldwide. It sounds like HSMI is a pretty serious disease problem for the industry. And then there were all these papers from Europe connecting Piscine Rio virus to HSMI. Yet according to the industry and government in British Columbia, they claim there is no evidence of a connection between the Piscine Rio virus and the serious disease of heart and skeletal muscle inflammation. I decided the only way to get to the bottom of this was to go to Norway, where the virus likely came from in the first place, and see for myself what the scientists there had to say. Was this virus connected to heart and skeletal muscle inflammation? Flying into the coast of Norway, it looks a lot like BC, complete with salmon farms dotting the inlets. This is the birthplace of the industry. Well over 90% of the farms in BC are owned by Norwegian multinationals. I began with the names and institutions listed on science papers. So HSMI is a pretty, um, it's a pretty major disease, is it? Yeah, it's uh, more or less spread along the whole coast. Here is a map from showing the outbreaks in 2010, and as you can see on the red spots here, it's uh, more or less all over the whole coast where they are producing salmon. HSMI has been a serious disease in Norway for some years now. It's a pretty serious disease. It was suddenly one day, it was, we had a kind of a, a new disease and, and uh, the disease was described and the virus was subsequently isolated and characterized. And that was the Piscine River virus? Yes, yes. It's caused by a virus uh, called Piscine Rio virus. The PRV, the PC in the rear virus, is causing HSMI. Nearly all scientists agree that it's the PRV is a causative agent. The Cox postulate, as we said, has been fulfilled, so it's possible to, to, to 
cause the disease by, by injecting the virus into the fish. And the virus alone will cause uh, changes in a naive uh, healthy fish will cause pathology, which is typical of HSMI. You can find the virus without any presence of disease, uh, but then you have to look for the levels of the virus, which is, seems to be related to, to the disease. So a lot of virus means more chances that there is a real disease ongoing. It spread within the fish and after many weeks after infection, it may accumulate in the heart and muscles and give pathological lesions there. But at the later stages, all of them, more or less, would have changes in the internal organs. The degree of change is very. We know that the amount of virus within the fish is related to, to the disease. This is a fish with HSMI. You can see it doesn't show from the outside much. If you open it, uh, you may find some hemorrhages on the liver, maybe some here on the heart. You use, will also find very soft musculature, like you see, it's just like butter. This is fish challenged with the, with the PRV virus. And again, you can see the bleedings on the liver. You can see that the virus is directly related to the lesions of the heart. Yeah. You can see that there is virus, uh, because the red is the virus. The um, virus is actually inside the white blood cells. Do you think that BC should be concerned about the Pacin virus? We know that this virus is probably introduced because we found it in Atlantic salmon from the Pacific, from British Columbia. And uh, when we sequenced the virus, it was more or less identical to a Norwegian uh, Piscine virus, which means that you have moved a virus from, from the North Atlantic to the Pacific. <laughs> that is always a case for concern because movement of pathogens is always a danger for establishing a new disease in a new area. I can be 100% sure that it's from the North Atlantic, because if it had been separated in a different population in the, in the Pacific, it wouldn't look that similar to the Norwegian virus. So what is the criteria for diagnosing HSMI? The criteria are that you find the characteristic lesions in heart and skeletal muscle and that you somehow are able to, to identify the, the piscin virus. yes. If, if that's harvested from a population that are suffering from a disease at the moment, then you can find pathological changes. Without the hearts? With the hearts. When you are looking at you HSMI, you need the heart for HSMI. Yeah. If you look into more or less healthy fish in the same farm, you will find lesions, probably in most fish. We don't know for sure whether it's 100%, but it's, it's widespread. But they might not show any clinical signs. So they are considered as, as healthy, and most of them will recover. If a salmon in the wild got HSMI, could they recover? I doubt it, because they will probably be eaten before they recovered. Because uh, a salmon with HSMI in the wild will have reduced swimming activity and will not be able to escape predators. So such a salmon will not survive for a very long time. So it would be, it would be very difficult to find HSMI in the wild? Yes, close to impossible. Now, why wouldn't we have the same thing going on in BC? We've been importing eggs. You have 100% pure. Well, you have the virus in, in British Columbia. And there's, if this is a causative agent, then I will bet that you also have the disease. But again, you have to be allowed to sample fish in the farm to detect the disease. That's the tricky part. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the hard it, part. If you're not allowed to do that, then it's impossible to show that you have the disease. To find it in wild salmon sounded impossible, as the changes to the heart don't show up until months after infection. For a wild salmon who would be migrating out to sea past the infected fish farms, they would likely be somewhere in the North Pacific by the time they began to slow down. We would never find them and they simply would never return. As far as finding it in the grocery store farmed salmon, we needed the heart to diagnose HSMI, something we would never find on the shelves. And of course, it would be impossible to simply sample sick farmed Atlantic salmon from a salmon farm. Government and industry had that one sewn up. 
Alex and I went on a tour of the farms to see if we could see any sick fish. If 70 to 100% of farm salmon in BC were infected with a virus, then there was a good chance we might see something. Sure enough, we found many pens with fish finning on the surface. These Atlantic salmon are seriously finning on the surface. They say one of the characteristics of HSMI is fish finning on the surface. We don't know. They're in public waters. The public deserves to know what is wrong with these fish in this mainstream farm. These are Atlantic salmon that originated from Norway that are sick. If you're concerned about wild fish in British Columbia, you gotta be concerned about thousands of fish behaving as if they're sick. Let us have some of the fish. Let's, have, let's, let's check them out. Then I could have a look at these fish, send them off to the lab, at least eliminate the three European viruses that I'm looking for, salmon alpha virus, Picine rio virus, and the infectious salmon anemia virus. And then I, I wouldn't, wouldn't have anything to say about it anymore, you know? We're not allowed to know. They're, they're in public water. We're the public. We should be allowed to know. But nobody knows. I guarantee you nobody has accessed these fish and had a look. Now, the Union of BC Indian Chiefs have written a letter to this company requesting samples from this fish. So we'll see what happens.